Hello and welcome to the first video in this unit on differential equations. In this video, we'll take our knowledge of linear algebra and build up a theory of differential equations based on the notion of differential operators. First, we'll define partial differential equations, also called PDEs. Then we'll explore their properties and the types of boundary conditions they can have. Finally, we'll look at a technique called separation of variables, which can produce analytic solutions for PDEs by converting them to related ODEs. Given two function spaces, V and W, a function L, which is a map from V to W, is called a linear operator if L of U plus V equals L of U plus L of V, and L of A times U equals A times L of U, for all U and V in the function space V and any scalar A. V is called the domain of L, and W is called its codomain. Given the function spaces F and G, and functions F and F, and G and G, then a linear differential operator P, which is a map from F to G, is a linear combination of derivatives of F, such that P of X and D equals the sum on alpha of H sub alpha of X D to the alpha, where alpha is a set of non-negative integers, H sub alpha of X are functions in n-dimensional space, and D to the alpha are are generalized derivatives of f. p satisfies the properties of linearity. p of u plus v equals p of u plus p of v, and p of a times u equals a times p of u. So the differential operator d is also linear. For example, the Laplacian del squared equals the sum from k equals 1 to n of d by dx sub k squared is a linear differential operator. Often, for partial derivatives, we'll use the notation du by dx sub j is the partial derivative with respect respect to x sub j acting on u, or simply u sub x sub j. Vector derivatives, divergence, gradient, and curl can all be defined using the del operator, where del equals the sum on i of x hat sub i times the partial derivative with respect to x sub i. Another example of a differential operator we'll see when we cover complex analysis is the cauchy riemann operator. If f of x plus i y equals u of x and y plus i times v of x and y, where f is a complex valued function and u U and V are real valued functions, then the cauchy riemann operator C is a map from the complex plane to R2, where C equals dx U minus dy V times x hat plus dy U plus dx V times y hat. In general, a linear ordinary differential equation can be expressed using differential operators as P of U equals a n of x dx to the n of U plus a n minus 1 of x dx to the n minus 1 of U, etc through a1 of x dx of u plus a0 of x times u of x equals f of x. In this unit, we'll be looking at partial differential equations. Partial differential equations are equations of the form d acting on u as a function of s is equal to f of x, where d is a differential operator and u and f are functions of more than one independent variable, s. When f of s equals zero, we call the equation homogeneous, otherwise it's inhomogeneous. The order of a differential equation is the order of the highest derivative in it. In practice, most physical systems are second order. For instance, f equals ma equals m times dt squared of x. However, there are some interesting third order equations. For instance, mass transport equations are third order, and fourth order equations include the elasticity equations. Differential equations are considered linear if they can be written as p of u equals f of x, where p of u is a linear differential operator. That means that the dependent variable and its derivatives appear in the equation at most to the first power. The heat equation dTu equals dx squared u is linear. Likewise, the Schrodinger equation I h bar dTu equals minus h bar squared squared over 2m times dx squared u plus v of x times u is also linear. The incompressible Navier-Stokes equation dTu plus u dot the gradient of u minus eta times the Laplacian of u equals zero is nonlinear because u appears twice in the second term. Consider the second order linear differential operator in two variables, p equals a dt squared plus 2b dt dx plus c dx squared plus lower order terms, where coefficients a, b, and c can be functions of t and x. The discriminant of this operator, delta equals b squared minus ac, gives us a classification of the PDEs p of u equals g of t and x. At the point t comma x, a PDE generates 
generated by P is called hyperbolic if delta is greater than zero. The wave equation UTT minus UXX equals zero has delta equal to one and therefore is hyperbolic. A PDE is called parabolic if delta equals zero and A squared plus B squared plus C squared is not equal to zero. The heat or diffusion equation UT minus UXX equals zero has delta equals zero and therefore is parabolic. A PDE is called elliptic if delta is less than zero. The Poisson equation UTT plus UXX equals minus G has delta equal to minus one and therefore is elliptic. Note that the Laplace equation is the homogeneous version of the Poisson equation. And lastly, a PDE is called singular if A equals B equals C equals zero. We can either solve differential equations generally or in specific cases. General solutions to ODEs typically depend on several arbitrary constants, called constants of integration. For PDEs, those constants can be arbitrary functions. Specific solutions depend on a choice of initial conditions and or boundary conditions. Initial conditions are familiar from dynamic ODE equations, such as equations of motion. PDEs often require data on their boundaries to find a unique solution. Dirichlet boundary conditions specify the solution along the entirety of a domain. Neumann boundary conditions specify the normal derivative along the boundary. Mixed boundary conditions specify the solution along portions of the boundary and the normal derivative along the remainder. In practice, there aren't many PDEs that we can outright solve analytically. Separation of variables is a technique that turns many common PDEs into coupled ODEs. Recall that an ODE is called separable if it can be written in the form d by dx equals f of x times g of y. This can be rearranged so that the two variables x and y are each isolated to one side of the equation. dy divided by g of y equals f of x times dx. Imagine we have a differential equation for u given by p of u of t and x equals f of t and x. For separation of variables, we try to find a solution of the form u of t and x equals t of t times x of x. Then, like in the ODE case, we try to get all of the functions of t and the derivatives with respect to t on one side of the equation, and all of those with respect to x on the other side. Let's consider the heat equation ut minus c uxx equals zero, with boundary conditions u of t and zero equals u of t and l equals zero, and initial condition u of zero and x equals f of x. Our onsatz is that u of t and x equals t of t times x of x. When we plug this into the heat equation, we get t prime x minus c t x double prime equals zero. We can isolate the terms depending on t on the left and the terms depending on x to the right. t prime divided by t equals c times x double prime divided by x. Since the left depends only on t and the right depends only on x, then both sides must be equal to the same constant minus lambda. We can now break this into two equations, t prime equals minus lambda t and x double prime equals minus c lambda x. The solution to the equation for t is t of t equals a e to the minus lambda t. And the solution to the equation for x is x of x equals b e to the root minus lambda times x plus c e to the minus root minus lambda times x. The boundary conditions tell us that x of 0 equals x of l equals 0. So x of x equals b times sine the square root of lambda times x, where lambda equals n times pi divided by l. Then u of x and t equals the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of dn sine n pi x over l times e to the minus alpha n squared pi squared divided by l squared times t. We claim, and will prove momentarily, that this is a linear combination of all possible solutions that satisfy the boundary conditions. For the initial conditions u of 0 and x equals f of x, we can expand f of x equals the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of dn sine n pi x over l in terms of the eigenfunctions of x of x, in this case sine n pi x over l and cosine n pi x over l. This is a set of orthogonal functions that spans the solutions x double prime equals minus c lambda x. The last step is calculating dn equals 2 over l times the integral from 0 to l of f of x times sine n pi x over l dx.
The reason this works is a direct consequence of the spectral theorem that we discussed a few videos back, which tells you when you can diagonalize matrices. Just like matrices, some differential operators can be diagonalized. Before we get there, we're going to need a few definitions. The eigenvalue equation for a differential operator d is d of u equals lambda u. Given a linear differential operator p acting on a real inner product space v, which has elements x and y, the adjoint operator p dagger is defined by the equation the inner product of px with y equals the inner product of x with p dagger y. p is said to be self-adjoint if p equals p dagger. The spectral theorem for linear differential operators states that for the self-adjoint operator P acting on the function space V, then there exists an orthonormal basis for V consisting of the eigenfunctions of P, and each of the eigenvalues of P are real. What this is saying is that the spectra, or the set of eigenvalues for each of the two equations in the previous example, t prime equals minus lambda t and x double prime equals minus c lambda x, are related and the value of lambda is the same for each. For a more general case, let's look at a differential equation p of u equals f of x with boundary conditions u of t and 0 equals u of t and l equals 0 and initial condition u of 0 and x equals f of x. Let's consider the case where p can be written as r acting on u equals s acting on u, where r is a differential operator with respect to t and s is a differential operator with respect to x. Let's try to write a solution of the form u equals t of t times x of x. Then we can rewrite the PDE as r of t on t equals s of x on x, which equals lambda. Rearranging this, we get r of t equals lambda t and s of x equals lambda x, and we arrive at the eigenvalue equations for the operators r and s. For the eigenvalue lambda, we'll call the eigenfunction of r, r sub lambda of t, and the eigenfunction for s, s sub lambda of x. Any function of t can be written as a linear combination of the r sub lambdas, and any function of x can be written as a linear combination of the s sub lambdas. Let the spectrum of r be e, and let lambda, which is an element of e, be an eigenvalue of r. Then we can write a generalized solution to our PDE as u of t and x equals the sum on lambda and e of a sub lambda times r sub lambda of t times s sub lambda of x. Thus, the spectral theorem guarantees that when separation of variables works on a linear PDE, then it finds all the possible solutions to that PDE. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.